what Resident Evil is known for as many final boss battles, and how they had such an impact for the respective Resident Evil games. So in this video, we'll be covering the final boss monsters from Resident Evil 4 to Resident Evil 6, and how they compare to each other and which one would be the best amongst them. Anyways, before we get started, my name is Heideva, and this is part 2 of my Resident Evil Final Boss Analysis series. So if you haven't seen the first video, I'll link it in the top right section of your screen so you guys can check it out as well. Also, if you guys want more videos like this in the future, then please feel free to smash that like and subscribe button for more Resident Evil content, and possibly sharing this video with a friend and any other social media outlets out there. I'd really really appreciate the support. Alright, so let's go ahead and discuss our first final boss villain, which is Osman Sadler from Resident Evil 4. So Sadler was famously known as the leader of the Los Illuminados, a cult that heavily influenced the village that we saw in RE4, which Sadler used his powers of the new strain called the Las Plagas, infecting the villagers and using his dominant Las Plagas inside him to take control of the people around him, almost like a mind control state. Also by the way, the Las Plagas are a parasite type of creature that was sealed off from the world by the Salazar family, the ancestor of the villain Ramon Salazar in RE4. Monsters. Guess after this there'll be one less to worry about where they had the Plaga sealed within a cave, and they built a castle on top of it to prevent this parasite to ever see in the light of day again. But through Osman Sandler's manipulation, he led Ramon Salazar to feel guilty for what his ancestors did, and opened up the seal to the Las Plaga's tomb, which then had some of the villagers excavate the ruins, to only find out that these parasites were fossilized. But the subsequent consequence of opening the cave would have the workers inhale the many spores of the Las Plagas, causing them to regrow within the human body which caught the eye of Sadler and focused his research into this new parasitic strain. So with the help of Louis Serra, he was able to genetically modify these plagas to a certain subset groups, which allowed some dominant plagas to take control of others, and be immune to the mind control aspect from it as well. Which explained how Sadler was shown to take control of our characters like Leon and Ashley during RE4, because he himself had a dominant plaga within him, making sure that everyone who was infected by him is now under his control. Which brings us to his impact in Resident Evil 4, and how he would eventually end up, which his initial plan was to kidnap the president's daughter, and use her as a marketing chip to acquire funds so they can further his research and spread the Las Plagas throughout the world. But the good thing is that Leon, one of the main protagonists from Resident Evil 2, is now tasked to stop this maniac from doing his crazy antics, which leads to their final boss fight by the end of the game, with Sadler showing us what fighting a dominant Plaga is all about, with a perfect depiction was his mutation into his final boss encounter. To show my appreciation. I will help you awaken from your world of cliches. Ada, stand back! So now Sadler is mutated into this parasitic spider-like monster with eyeballs throughout his body, almost like the mutated G eyeballs of William Birkin from RE2. So with this form, Sadler is able to do his many melee attacks, and even show that he can throw large beams of steel towards our characters, showing how powerful he is. But similar to the end of the tyrants that we see from the previous Resident Evil titles, Sadler meets his end with this. So overall, Sadler was an interesting take on a final boss villain who was capable of doing his mind control shenanigans, because we can only wonder what would have happened if the Las Plagas was able to spread throughout the world, and how Sadler was in full control of the dominant Plaga within him. <laughs> What's so funny? Anyways, moving on to our next Resident Evil final boss, which is the infamous Albert Wesker, the man who terrorized us from the earlier Resident Evil titles to now becoming this superhuman-like character who's hell-bent on becoming the god of his envisioned new world. The right to be a god. So I'll be quickly covering Wesker in this video, but I do have a separate video where I cover him completely, so if you guys are interested in that, then please feel free to check that video out on my channel. So Albert Wesker makes his return in Resident Evil 5, and being the main antagonist to Chris Redfield again, but is now much more hellbent and his ego in full display, showing off his many superhuman-like powers when we saw both Jill and Chris fight him at the Spencer estate, which made us see how much he's progressed after receiving the experimental progenitor viral strain from William 
William Birkin during the events of RE1, because not only does he have the superhuman strength, but he's also faster than a speeding bullet, where he's able to dodge gunshots with ease. But the only way of stopping or slowing him down was by injecting him with more of the viral strain, deregulating the balance within his body. But even with this, it still wasn't enough to take him down, because he will still try to continue his plan of world domination by spreading the new strain called the Ouroboros around the world and weeding out those who couldn't assimilate and becoming the god that he envisioned himself to be. But the good thing is that his own ego got the best of him, and Chris was able to stand his ground when Wesker mutates into his final form like shown here. Now infusing himself with the powers of the Ouroboros, he now has a combination of his previous superhuman powers, but is now magnified with a new strain. To die, Chris. Chris was finally able to stop Wesker's plan, when Wesker himself got stuck in lava and finally eliminated in the classic Resident Evil fashion, which has me thinking that the developers for this game is really obsessed about killing off the main final boss with rocket launchers, because we all know the casualties that the other monsters had to go through with this weapon. I mean, just ask Mr. X, he knows all about it. Anyways, overall, Albert Wesker was a villain who we truly love to hate, especially with all his egotistical gloating, always insulting us about our mission, and his obsession of becoming a god making him one of the most beloved final bosses in Resident Evil history. Don't you two ever tire of failing in your mission? Anyways, let's move on to our final Resident Evil game in this video, which actually had three different final bosses that we had to face, ranging from the world-ending Chaos, to the devious Derek Simmons, and the tyrant-like monster Ustanak, with each of them having their own special traits that made them stand out in Resident Evil 6. So let's go ahead and start off with Chaos. So Chaos is known as the world-ending B.O.W., which we encounter at the end of Chris Redfield's campaign, with its initial form still beneath the giant chrysalis that we see here, just waiting for it to fully mature and spread the sea virus around the world. But luckily for Chris, Chaos was actually awakened much earlier than it should be, and it still proved to be a larger than life BLW that had to be stopped at all costs, because the infection rate of Chaos would be catastrophic if left unchecked, with a great depiction shown here, with the monitor showing us how the world could end with the spread of the sea virus due to this monster. So Chris Redfield and his partner Pierce is tasked to stop this monster from being free, and it was up to them to eliminate it before it wrecks havoc. So our initial encounter with Chaos would have us running away from it in the first sequence, as we just admire how ginormous this monster is. But Chaos would meet its end when we have Pierce who himself got infected with the sea virus, and is now capable of shooting lightning strikes from his mutated arm, dismantling Chaos once and for all. So overall, Chaos was a great world-ending concept of a final boss in Resident Evil 6, showing us that there is a magnitude to these BLWs, and how they can be truly terrifying when we have to go up against them. Alright, so let's move on to our next final boss in RE6, with a devious Derek Simmons and his many mutations. So Simmons is the primary and final boss for Leon's campaign, where he was the one who tried to frame our protagonist for the death of the United States President, and Leon bearing the casualties of the many Tall Oak citizens, also getting Helena, Leon's partner in the game involved with his crazy scheme, trying to frame her as well. But Simmons and his whole backstory could actually be boiled down to his broken ego due to his infatuation with Ada Wong, who he had worked alongside with years prior. But her rejection wasn't taken lightly by Simmons, and he became obsessed with being with Ada at all costs, doing countless experiments to more than 12,000 women, trying to recreate Ada among them, which in the end would have Carla Redames, a woman who was initially infatuated with Simmons, becomes the perfect subject of becoming a clone of Ada 
Amanda Wong, being manipulated by Simmons and doing it, so that he can finally have his dream woman next to him. But this wouldn't work due to Carla regaining her self-conscious back after turning into Ada Wong, with their new goal was to stop Simmons at all costs, and being that deterrent for him throughout the game, which leads Simmons to being infected when he gets shot with a new and potent dose of the C-Virus, turning him into one of the most versatile monsters that we've seen today in the Resident Evil franchise, where he can turn into all of these monsters, each one with a particular animal style of combat, ranging from a four-legged leopard BLW, to a large T-Rex monster, and to a large insect-like monster who can assimilate other infected into him, and becoming much larger in size. But even with all these mutations and versatility, Simmons would find his end due to Leon and Helena, with his end becoming like this. Also, I like the reference of the Umbrella Corporation with the way Simmons' blood covering the portion of the monument, reminding us Resident Evil fans the horror that this company has started. So overall, Simmons was an interesting and psychopathic final boss, so I'll be covering him more in detail in a future video, so please let me know if you guys would be interested in that. Alright, so let's move on to our final Resident Evil boss in this video, which is the tyrant-like being named Ustanak. Okay, we go with your plan. So Ustanak was actually an individual who was infected with a C-Virus by Carla, and seemed to only follow her commands. Also, his overall presence, like I mentioned earlier, is almost tyrant-like, reminding us of Nemesis from Resident Evil 3, because after his intro, we get to see him chase after Sherry and Jake throughout their campaign, showing a lot of outlandish maneuvers and acrobatics. But his most versatile aspect is his interchangeable arms, which he can change from a claw to using as a ranged minigun. But Ustanak was shown much more throughout the game, being that constant stock that gave us such a great time during Jake's campaign, but his end would be met in a different way compared to the Tyrants, which Ustanak sustained so much damage from falling into a pool of lava that meets his end here. This shit ends now. So overall, Ustanok was a great final boss with the way he followed us throughout the campaign, with each encounter having something fresh to see when we go up against him, and being the spiritual successor to Nemesis also helped as well. Anyways, who was your favorite Resident Evil final boss in this particular video? Please let me know who and why on the comment section down below. And also, if you guys enjoyed this content, and you want me to continue this Resident Evil final boss series, then hit that like button and smash that notification bell so you guys are alerted when I upload my next video. Anyways, thank you guys so much, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day. And this is Hey Deva, signing out.